Yes guys, welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another review for you guys today. Everton won Chelsea nil. Absolutely jarring and if this is the way the undefeated streak had to end it couldn't have really gone down in a worse way One guilty Sigurdsson penalty is literally all that separates both sides and it's it's so it's so jarring because Everton came into this game and they didn't even want to win They came into this game to just play for a draw and we handed them the win on a silver platter But we're gonna delve into it further into this video But before I start as usual if you guys haven't done so already hit that like button press that subscribe button hit that bell notification button as well to get that hat trick which we really could have dealt with today but help help me out and let tonight be a little bit of a better night for me by hitting that like button and pressing that subscribe button but without further ado let's go straight into the match review and the lineup came out which i didn't really have too many issues with we had a lot of injuries going into this game we were without any wingers so we had to deal with timo Werner and kai havertz playing on the wings again and kai havertz i'll be outright and say it Poor performance, probably his worst performance of the season. But I'm not going to get on his back about it. Fact is, he's out of position in a position that he isn't comfortable with. A position that we've seen that he isn't comfortable with earlier on the season when we tried playing him in the right as well against Liverpool and against Brighton. And it didn't work out in those games. And it didn't work out here today. So I'm just going to shrug my shoulders with it. I'm not going to come here and start ranting or being angry or anything saying, why did we play Kai Havertz on the right? Because we understand why we played Kai Havertz on the right. It didn't work. He got hauled off for Tammy Abraham. It, it, it just really is what it is. We know Kai Havertz is better playing off in the middle. We know he's better when he's closer off to the striker, when he's closer to Timo Werner. He should be playing in the middle as well. And also struggled on the left-hand side again because he struggles against a parked bus coming in off the left. And I think we know that as fact by now. Timo Werner is a player who works at his best with space and behind. He's very instinctual. You can't try and have him stop and try and think about his options because... His dribbling and his, and his I won't say his footballing IQ because he's just a better player up forward. He's, a, he's better going into space and being instinctual with his finishing and that's where he is at his best. We can't try and get him to be too more involved trying to come in off the left-hand side because he's better roaming there from in deep. And we know that, which is all of that put into position, I understand why we struggled. The only reason why I'm annoyed is... There were the chances where we could have finished it. Rhys James was very unlucky not, not to score. He had two chances that hit the post. One off the free kick and one in the first half where it hit the post off the inside of the post and came straight back outside. It was so, so jammy. The Olivier Giroud chance at the end, like, I'm not going to sugarcoat that one. He really should have put that one into the back of the net. There would have been an equaliser. But it's also half the reason why I'm not coming in out of this game that angry i'm more frustrated that this is how it ended but i'm not that angry with the fact that we lost we didn't get battered by everton we didn't get played out of the pot we just handed them the result on a silver platter and we just couldn't really get back into it and to be honest we should have because we should have taken our chances but the biggest issue with chelsea which i think comes out of this is we aren't clinical enough and I think we've known that for weeks, but it's becoming more and more of a glaring issue. We create so many chances and we don't put them into the back of their net. And the only annoying thing about that is because this was an issue from last season and it was an issue from the season before that and the season before that as well, all the way back up to Conte's first season. This was a big issue for us. We do not convert enough of our chances. And it was about time it came and kicked us in the ass. And that's exactly what happened today. We weren't clinical enough and we were made to pay for it. That is why we lost the game. We started the game slowly. I will be real with that, but we were also facing a side that only wanted to draw and were playing defensively minded first. That's why they played with a five at the back. Nothing against that. We know Everton's set up and the way they've come into this game. They're in terrible form. They're without both of their best fullbacks and they're without James Rodriguez as well. So they were going to have very limited creativity. But they still gave us a hell of a fight in the midfield. Their press was very strong. I think our passes also didn't really help them out. I thought Kante's passing was iffy today. I think the same goes for Mason Mount. Mateo Kovacic's final ball could improve. And I've spoken about Kai Havertz, who really just struggled to have any impact on the right-hand side. And then the penalty comes in, and I'm not going to criticise Edouard Mendy for it because it's not his fault. The guy's a sort of the guy's a sort of goalkeeper that throws himself at anything. He throws himself at crosses, at shots, everything. That's the sort of player he is. He threw himself straight into that situation and conceded the penalty. That is just a consequence of the player that he is. I'm not going to sit here and criticise him for it. I'm barely even going to call it a mistake. These things happen in the game, so I'm just going to take it on the chin and move on. Sigurdsson scores the penalty. 
We barely do much for the rest of the half because Everton have sat back another 20 yards because they came and they got a lead and they were surprised they even had the lead in the first place. And we had the chance from Reese James to equalise, which is very unlucky to hit the post, but that was our best chance going forward. Second half, I do think they came forward a little bit more, but um, what was it? It was Reese James and Golo Kante that was saving us for the most part. I think Kurt Zuma and Thiago Silva were solid as well. They, get, they did get caught out a couple more times as we overcommitted a few bodies up forward. But we struggled to break down Everton and we really should have taken our chance to put him in the back of the net when we should have. That Olivier Drew chance at the end really is really getting to me because he should have put that into the back of the net. It's jarring that he didn't. I know it's just a, it's a bad chance. You have to take it on the chin. But that's, that's where the fine margins of victory and defeat are. And the title contenders, the real title contenders, they would have been able to, bro to break down a team like this. And I'm not saying Chelsea aren't real title contenders, but we're meant to be there or thereabouts. And I think this would have been a big test of whether we can or can't do it. Fact is, we were two wins away from being guaranteed first or second going into the game against West Ham with Liverpool and Spurs facing on Wednesday night. But now that's completely in the mud unless Liverpool lose to Fulham and Spurs lose to Crystal Palace. And I'll be real, I'm not a betting man, but I don't see that shit happening, which means... We're probably not going to see the top of the table for the rest of Christmas. I mean, there's still a long way to go, but you want to start as you mean to go on. And this was a very easy game for us to take three points. I was confident going into this game. I was saying 3-0 Chelsea because it felt like that sort of game where Everton weren't coming in good form and we were coming with a chance to make a name. But uh, we just struggled to break them down and the penalty is really all that separates it, which is so jarring. But let's go straight into the player ratings. We're going to start off in goal. Edward Mendy was unlucky for the penalty other than that i think he had a pretty good performance so i'm gonna just do i give a five or a six i'll probably give him a six because it was really just one mistake other than that yeah six for him reese james man of the match it's either him or N'Golo Kante, but I think Kante started the game poorly, so I'm going to go for Reese James. One of our few bright sparks defensively and offensively, such a big threat. And he had a lot of work to do covering that entire right-hand side, because he basically did it single-handedly. Which meant he did get caught out the odd once or twice, but for the most part, what a performance. He gets an 8 from me. Thiago Silva... Uh, he had he actually had a good couple battles in the air for, for most of the game, but other than that, I thought he was solid. I thought his passes from deep were really trying to create stuff, but it was, the issues were further forward up the field. So it's a six for him. It's a six for Kurt Zuma as well, who nearly scored off the header and managed better defensively as well. Ben Chilwell, now I thought it, it wasn't really a good performance from him. He didn't really offer too much support going forward. And also thought we struggled with, with Alex Awobi and half of his drives forward as they were transitioning from defence to attack. So I don't think it was a solid performance from him. I'll probably just leave it as a five. I don't think he was the worst player on the field, but it wasn't a good performance from him overall. And Golo Kante, like I said earlier, I thought his passing was sloppy earlier on in the game, but he still kept himself very involved. There was a lot of breakups of play and a lot of strong interceptions. Pro he progressed the ball forward pretty well as well, but the final ball let him down a little bit too many times. So I'm just going to leave it as six for today. Mason Mount, I thought was... Uh, I like the work rate and I like the stuff they did off the ball, but the crossing wasn't really good enough. I thought the corners definitely weren't good enough today. And he got dispossessed way too many times. I only got dispossessed 20 times in the entire match. And yeah, I'll probably just leave it as a five for him. I don't think it was a good performance from him today. Mateo Kovacic, I thought was solid progressively, the better of the two attacking eights. But the final ball let him down a little bit too much. Strong on the ball though. He did enjoy the fight in the midfield between the press. So I will give him a six. I think he was the better midfielder out of the two. Moving on to Kai Havertz who was... Uh, he was poor. Out of position which I do give him credit for. He was going to struggle. But, the, but he was really poor. The final ball wasn't good. He held on to the ball way too many times. There was a chance where he should have gone for the shot. And he was second guessing himself. It wasn't the game for him today. I'm going to give him a three. Timo Werner. As well, has to get a free. He was invisible today. He struggled to create anything off that left-hand side. I already said earlier, he struggles to deal with a parked bus, especially coming in off that left-hand side. And it would have been a better option to play up front, but limited options. We've got barely any wingers to deal with, so I understand Frank Lampard was struggling today. Olivier Giroud, decent hold-up play. I think he liked the physical battle in the game, but he struggled with the final pass and that he really should have equalised towards the end of the game. So I'm going to give him a five. Also, I think he got gassed towards the end of the game. He does look like the sort of player that can't play 90 minutes consistently. You've got to be able to manage his time as well, like Thiago Silva, if you, what, if you get what I mean. 
Moving on to the subs, Billy Gilmore, I thought was looked really out of place when he came on, but he didn't really have much time to do anything, so I'm going to give him a five. Tammy Abraham as well, there was a chance where he really could have turned towards the end and it didn't work out for him, so I'm going to give him a five as well. And who was the final substitution? Um, who was the final sub? I don't know a bit. Don't even care. It don't even matter too much. Probably just give him a five as well. You lot let me know down in the comment section below. But it's Everton 1, Chelsea 0. I'm going to get started with a live phone. And so, guys, take care and up the Chelsea.